Close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. Notice what kind of breathing feels good and allow the breath to find a rhythm that's really good for the body. It may change, so keep on top of it, but that's part of learning how to give your mind a good place to stay. The mind needs a solid place to stay in the present moment because otherwise it's wandering around all the time. And when you're wandering around, you're not in a position of strength. That's when the mind is solidly settled in that it's strong. Because the mind needs its strength in order to counteract all of the greed, aversion, and delusion outside in the world, and also the greed, aversion, and delusion it can find inside itself. People sometimes wonder why is it that we we need to get the mind concentrated in order to gain discernment. Well, there are two reasons. One is just to be able to see things clearly, you have to be sitting still. And then you see things that you're doing that are not skillful, but you like doing them. You need the strength in order to resist that. You need the discernment in order to resist that. Otherwise, you may know about the fact that greed is bad for you, but you go for it anyhow because the mind is weak. Anger is bad for you, but go for it because the mind is weak. So you need to strengthen the mind. Because you have to realize the most important thing in life is your, is your actions. This is what we bring with us when we come to life, and this is what we take with us when we go. You bring in your past actions, and you take with you the actions that you're doing in this lifetime. So you want to make sure you're taking good actions with you. It's like packing your bags for a trip. You don't want to take all the stuff out of the garbage pail and put it in your bags. You know, often, all too often that's what we do, because we act on our greed, we act on aversion, we act on delusion. It's like packing our bags with garbage. So you want to clean that out and be able to look at your actions. So the Buddha said the, the beginning of wisdom is when you ask the question, what when I do what will lead to my long-term welfare and happiness? What when I do what will lead to my long-term harm and suffering? Realizing that happiness and, and suffering come from your actions. They don't come from outside. And also that long-term is better than short-term. Now in order to resist that short-term temptation, that's another aspect of discernment. And when you know that's something you like to do but it's going to give long-term bad results, you know how to say no to yourself. Wisdom is pragmatic. Discernment is pragmatic. If there's something you don't like to do but it's going to give long-term good results, you, look, you know how to talk yourself into doing it. You have to think strategically this way. Sometimes we hear about Buddhist wisdom or Buddhist discernment as being something very abstract, but it starts out very practically. What are you doing? Is it going to be for your long-term happiness? If not, why are you doing it? If you're doing something that's for your long-term harm, why are you doing it? Learn how to talk yourself into doing the things that you know will be good in the long, in the long run. That kind of wisdom is a treasure. You can gain the wisdom and the discernment that comes from reading books, which is good for you, but it doesn't really have the impact unless you start to train the mind. And then that discernment, that wisdom, then becomes part of your mind, not only where you're sitting and meditating, but as you go through life. You've got a good, strong place to stand. Why put yourself in a position of weakness? You've got the potential to create treasures with your actions. So why pack your bags with garbage? So make sure that discernment is in charge of your life. That of all the treasures is the most important. We talk about the noble treasure this, the, during this Rains Retreat. Discernment is the ultimate one, and it's also the most important. As John Lee says, if you have discernment, then all you need is all you need is a knife. You can set yourself up in life. In other words, you can figure out good, useful things to do with even just little things, like a little knife. You can use to cut away obstructions. You can use to dig into the ground. You can do, get all kinds of purposes out of it if you've got discernment. If you have no discernment, then you can have all the wealth and all the belongings you might think of, all the connections you might think of, but you put them to a bad use, you end up harming yourself. So it's discernment that makes all the difference. So make sure you give the mind a good, solid place to stay, solid place to stay, so it can develop its discernment. Start asking the right questions. It's not, do I feel like saying this? It's, would this be a good thing to say? What would be the results? Do I feel like doing this? That's not the question. Would this lead to your long-term welfare and happiness or lead to your long-term harm and suffering? When you start asking the right questions, then you just have the potential of getting the right answers. And if the mind is solid and strong with a sense of well-being inside, then it's a lot easier to follow through with the right answers as well. So make sure you put discernment in charge of your life and don't put your moods in charge. 
Now when the time comes to pack your bags, you find you have more treasures than you know what to do with. You can share them with other people, and it turns out you don't have to carry them around with you. They'll go with you on their own. In the meantime, you have lots of treasures to enjoy in this life as well. So you win all around. <laughs>